Okay, so we, we're going to take a look at um, three different data sets that we recorded on our trip to Kilv. The first one is recorded using the iPhone LiDAR. And that's what we've got on the screen here. Um, as you can see, we've got quite a nice looking model. The scale bar here is one meter. So each one of these segments is 10 centimeters. And there's quite a lot of detail in this model. And mm. this was just walking around the outcrop with the phone. The great thing about using the phone LiDAR is that it's very easy to see what you're collecting while you're in the field and very easy to see what data gaps they are so you can go and, and fill them in. Uh, but what we really wanted to do here was look at how good quality the data itself is. So it's one thing looking at a textured mesh, but if you wanted to make measurements from this, how good is it and how does it compare to other um, data types? Mm -hmm. And how long did it take you to collect all this data from the... So each data set, uh, we tried to spend the... the a similar amount of time collecting each one so it was only really sort of five minutes for each data set so kept it very short very quick mm -hmm. kept the param data collection parameters as um, as close together as we could based on the fact that we were using different data collection techniques so tried to stay the same distance from the outcrop and spend roughly the same amount of time mm -hmm. as well as working with the phone lidar we collected the images using um, the phone camera. So let me just switch that on now. We want to switch uh, mesh and we want to have that back on. So this is the data from the phone camera. The exposure on the camera was slightly different. What was good about using the camera phone is that it's very easy to get into places that are you know, quite difficult to access. So these little sort of caves and, and areas like this, they're quite difficult to get in with using um, the mirrorless camera, but using the phone, it's quite straightforward. So again, spent a similar amount of time. In this case, the data was processed using Metashape. So we did the processing back in the office. Mm -hmm. The third data set that we used, we collected it using the mirrorless camera, the Nikon Z7 mm -hmm. Mark III. Um, now this was a little bit more difficult to get into these hard to reach areas because the nature of NSLR is, you know, it's bigger and being able to sort of reach in with it wasn't so easy. I think the, what my sort of initial impression with using the mirrorless camera is it actually slightly better for working on a, on a slightly larger scale Right. than say using the phone lidar or the um or the camera on the phone because with the, with uh, the phone you can just put the camera in any orientation that you want to exactly yeah. um, now then again this is processed um back in the office using metashape of course when you're looking at the RGB or photorealistic images, that's only giving you part of the um, part of the information. It's what is the actual structure of the mesh and how much detail is in the mesh itself. And the easiest way to look at that is to look at one of the parameters. Let's go to coplanarity. So I'm going to go back to uh, the original um, data set that we looked at, so the LiDAR data set, and I'm going to switch on the coplanarity attribute for this. Well. Now, coplanarity is showing areas that are quite flat. When you have a model that's quite smooth, you tend to get quite a lot of high coplanarity areas, and we're picking up 
the bedding planes on here quite nicely and we can see you know, picking up some of these joint planes in here as well mm -hmm. but when we go and compare this to say the phone images so we'll filter that off and switch the phone images back on and look at the same parameter coplanarity see in here there's a lot more variation in the coplanarity and a lot more detail so this is picking up a lot more of the topographic expression mm. of the outcrop and obviously is a much more detailed data set loose we'll switch to having a look at the um one from the mirrorless camera as well so switch that back on and do the same thing and open it up and switch on coplanarity and again we see a similar thing that we have a lot more detail in the mesh so i think that shows that though the phone lidar gives you some very nice looking models the actual amount of detail that you can get from the data itself is better using sort of more traditional photogrammetric approaches. So, you know, um, structure from motion, multi-view stereo kind of approaches. Yeah, so if Thank you wanted... You. Sorry, go on. Um, so if you wanted to make structural measurements on different bedding planes, if you've got, say, faults or, or fractures in there, um, it's better to use a traditional photogrammetry approach um, as opposed to the iPhone LiDAR? I would say so. Mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. my conclusion from this. And also, the phone LiDAR is really limited to about a range of five meters. And if you go on onto an outcrop that's much bigger than this, you're going to struggle, particularly if you're working on cliff faces, which are higher than five meters. So I would, generally speaking, prefer to use the photogrammetric approach, but the advantage of using the outcrop, the, the phone LiDAR, is that you can build a model while you're in the field. And it takes a few minutes to collect it. And you can see what your data coverage is. You can see where the data gaps are. And you can get something that's on your phone. Um, and you can manipulate it and do that within a relatively short amount of time. The big disadvantage is the cost of buying um, an iPhone with the built-in LiDAR or the iPad with the LiDAR. So you can actually yeah. generate um, these models using you know, various apps on the phone which will do the photogrammetric processing for you. So you don't actually need the LiDAR to do it. So it has its place. They're great. I think the phone-based LiDAR and gives you some really nice models and I've used them for um, as part of wider, larger studies where I've used it for creating or ma making data for scaling the rest of the model with mm -hmm. and I can see on field trips if you want to create a model very quickly to point out features to people and move the model around it's a great way of doing that. Right um, and, and as you said it's really good for picking up data in real time so you you wouldn't pick up the data gaps and you can quickly go back and fill in those data gaps as opposed to if you have the mirrorless camera you're just relying on the coverage that you got on the day in the field i think that's that's fair assessment of it great okay cool okay well that's a little overview of our results from looking at different outcrop data collection techniques on an outcrop of this scale. That was great. Thanks very much. You're welcome.